When we learned about descriptive statistics for a single variable, we learned how to visualize those variables using bar charts. When we have a categorical variable, we can create a bar chart in which we put the categories on the x-axis and the counts or frequencies on the y-axis. Here we see five types of dog toys represented by the bars, and the heights of the bars tell us how many dogs were in each category. The bar is centered over the scores on the x-axis, and we know that it is a bar chart because the bars do not touch. If it was a histogram, the bars would touch. The disconnected nature of the bars tells us that these categories are disconnected from each other which also allows us to improve upon our bar chart by using a Pareto option. We can rearrange the order of these bars, placing them in descending order, making it much easier to see which categories have the greatest frequencies. Again, the bars are centered over scores on the x-axis, and counts or percentages could be represented in the y-axis. But there's more than one type of bar chart. And I'm going to teach you about two other ones that could be very useful in specific situations. Let's look at this particular bar chart and see what is different about it versus the ones that I've shown you before. This bar chart is examining the distribution of voters and eligible voters by generation in the presidential elections from 2016 through 2036. This video is being recorded in 2020, so obviously these are projections of how the distributions will be in future years. But let's look at these 100% stacked bar charts. Notice that the bars are all exactly the same height, representing 100%. If I asked you how many people voted in 2016 compared to 2020, you would not be able to tell from the height of these bars. However, you can clearly see the subdivisions within those categories. The subdivisions represent generations. The darkest bar at the top of the stacked bar chart is the silent generation. This would be my grandparents' generation. My parents were baby boomers, and I would be in Generation X. Generation X, actually drawn from the title of a book by Douglas Coupland that I remember reading back in the early 90s before I even knew that we were Generation X. The millennials were born around the time of the change of the century, or more accurately of the millennia, around the year 2000, and Generation Z follows them. If you are a typical college student, beginning your college career around age 18, you are probably in Generation Z. Let's look at the distribution of these generations within the voting populace. What we can see is that over time, for instance, in 2024, over 60% of voters will be Generation X, Millennials, and Generation Z. And that percentage continues to increase for the subsequent years of 2028 and beyond. Remember that with a stacked bar chart, we lose the ability to compare between, but we maintain or add the ability to compare within variables. And this makes it very useful for using time series data, where we are comparing across time. But there's another form of bar chart that would allow us to see subdivisions within particular categories to further subdivide our continuous variables and look more exquisitely at the counts that are available. And this is called a side-by-side -side bar chart. On the x-axis, we see the three breeds of dog. But instead of a single bar representing days to fail, we have subdivided using the breeds of dogs with the number of days to fail by its binned category. What we see is that chihuahuas are represented in the lower two categories, meaning they chewed up their toys most quickly, fuzzy dogs kind of in the middle, and retrievers on the upper end. We're not seeing individual bars, but rather clusters. And each bar cluster displays one level of the category. The bars within the cluster represent the second variable, in this case, the binned quantitative variable. We will be able to create both a stacked bar chart and a side-by-side -side bar chart 
using our data set in Excel.